afternoon, YouTube. If you've gotten one of these, or maybe you're thinking about getting one of these, a DMR ham radio, and you're worried about making that first code plug, there's a lot of hype out there about, ooh, you've got to have a code plug and this and that and the other, and that's right, you do have to have a code plug, but it's not nearly as hard as you think it is. So stay tuned and see just how easy it is to get a code plug put on your DMR radio. Okay, so this is the Anytone 878 UV Plus DMR radio. A lot of people kind of stress out about that code plug, thinking, oh my gosh, it's so hard. They scour the internet, they go to the Miklor website or something and get a sample plug because they don't know how to do it themselves. Um, but honestly, it's not that bad to create your own. Excuse me. So a couple things you need to do. First, if you have not already, before you even order your radio, and if you've already got it, well, it's going to take you a little bit. Um, head over to RadioID.net. You need to go ahead and register to get a Radio ID, a DMR number. Okay, because your radio is not going to be any good without it. So go ahead and get that. Now, I say you're going to wait a little while. It didn't really take that long for mine. I think I did it, I don't know, around lunchtime and I had it that evening. Um, but just make sure you've got that Radio ID number in there. Um, next thing, when you get that radio ID, first thing you want to do, click over here. That, and this is the software that comes. You can get this off of the Anytone website for the D878 UV programming. Get that, open this. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your radio ID. And you're going to call it whatever you want to call it. I'll call it my call sign. Click in and you'll see it shows up there. You can actually have multiple radio, ID, radio IDs in there if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to bother with it. Next thing you want to do is import contacts. Okay, there are a buttload of contacts. That's an official measurement, um, but there are a bunch of them out there. Nobody wants to sit here and type all these things. So what you want to do is you're going to go to... amateurradio.digital okay and I'll pause while I log okay so I'm all logged in and what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down to right here where it says free CSV download that's just a comma separated value file click it and it's going to dump it down into your downloads folder or wherever it is that you have it go then let me get that out of my way what you want to do is you actually want to import these contacts in here. Now, the contacts, you don't have to have those in there. You can actually use your radio without the contacts in there. It's just instead of you seeing that, you know, when WF5N is calling, you just see his radio ID and you don't see that that's Ben or, you know, whoever it is that you're working with. So what you're going to do is you're going to go Tool, Import, and then right down here, Digital Contact List. And boom, I'm going to open that. And then down here at the bottom, import. And this just takes a second. Or 10. Okay, maybe a little more than 10. And pause that while it runs. Okay, so that's run. You get the thing that says import complete. Hit it. It's going to chew on something for a second. Boom, and there are all your contacts. Okay, so now you've got your contacts in there. Some people will actually import all of their talk groups. Um, I don't import them all just because I don't really want them all in there. I just put the ones that I'm going to use. So, for example, this one, 
is local and that's number nine this one I'm going to call Northeast Mississippi that's 31285 if I remember correctly this one's Mississippi that's 3128 etc you're gonna just keep putting your talk groups in here you can get a list of those talk groups just Google um, DMR talk group list I'll actually put a link to something down in the the notes down below that'll lead you to that um, but you can fill as many of these talk groups as you want and like I said you can import them in there if you really want to it's it's got the, the space in the radio to get them all in there um, next you need to start getting some channels set up okay so channels these are the default channels because like I said this is a brand spanking new radio and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna double click there and we just got a new DMR repeater in Oxford and this one I'm gonna go ahead and list as Northeast Mississippi and you'll see why in a second that frequency is 440.575 which means it's gonna save it for oops not 449 445.575 um, I'm a little ways away from it so I'm gonna hit turbo plus you know <laughs> big money big I love turbo and that's Northeast Mississippi double click it I'm pretty sure that's on time slot two um, the color code here you're gonna need to get that from whatever repeater it is that you're trying to get into and then I'm gonna hit next and the reason I'm gonna hit back the reason I called that Oxford DMR Northeast Mississippi is because I set that contact to be Northeast Mississippi as well and so what that's actually gonna do is when I go to channel one okay it's gonna automatically have that talk group there for me so the next one is gonna go Oxford DMR and that's just gonna be Mississippi I have the room so I can just type that in there 440.575 445.575 remember uh, we like turbo same thing here oh, let me turn that down that is somebody on the DMR radio right now um, time slot 2 boom next all right so I've got a couple digital channels in there um, this radio is also capable of doing analog communication so if I want to put an analog repeater I can label it accordingly and I think it's 147.33 which means this could be 147.93 uh, bandwidth this can be wide remember big money big prizes we're gonna go turbo um, make sure you set that to be analog because you'll see these options right here gray out because you don't need to set those um, go ahead and set your decode or encode tones um, remember decode is for you to actually receive the the radio traffic it would have to send a, a code to your radio to open your squelch for you to hear it encode is what you're going to send to the repeater to open the repeater um, not a whole bunch of repeaters that I know of have a decode but a buttload of them have an encode and that one if I remember correctly oops not that 107.2 and hit OK okay so now you can see I've got three frequencies or three channels programmed in here um, two of them are actually the same frequency but they're gonna hit different contacts you don't have to do that you could just you know pull up the list and have that DMR repeater and then pull up the list every time whatever floats your boat um, the next thing you might want to do is set up zones okay so hit zones and I may want to put this as DMR and from here I'm just gonna add whatever channels I want into that zone and then hit next this one I'm just gonna call analog and obviously I'm gonna put the analog one in there um, you could actually create another one that you know maybe you travel a lot you could have an entire zone just called Oxford okay and it would just take 
all of those in there, whatever. You can have several zones set up in there. And that way, when you hit that up and down button on the radio to change zones, you're changing literally zones. So, you know, if you travel from Dallas, Texas to New Orleans, Louisiana pretty often, you could have a zone for Dallas, a zone for New Orleans, and just switch back and forth accordingly. And when you hit done, or OK rather, you've got those in there. OK. Um, next thing you want to do is if you want to go ahead and write it to the radio. So if I hit write to radio, and I hit OK, you're going to want to tell it to, actually, you know what? I forgot to tell you. I have to set the port first. So you're going to hit set, set com. Now you're going to notice this is empty. Okay, and that's because the radio is not turned on. A lot of times the uh, things that get you banging your head against the wall and stuff like that are the, the little things that you don't think about. The radio actually has to be turned on, so I just turned it on. And it'll take, I don't know, like 5 or 10 seconds for it to start up. It says booting, please wait. Got the little Anytone logo. I'm going to change that. And boom, there it is. And you'll see it now pops up. Hey, look, I found something on COM7. Click OK. So now you can write it to the radio and you're going to say yes. Now, the digital contact list, you want to go ahead and send, import that with it. Other data is literally just that, all the other data. And you're going to hit go. And this is actually going to take a second because that digital contact list takes them a little bit to get in there you will want to make sure you on some kind of schedule download a new digital contact list every now and then and upload it in there because that list grows really really fast I mean more and more folks are getting into DMR and so you know it, it grows pretty quick um, you can see this is going to take a minute so we're going to pause when this gets a little closer to the end okay and you see that that the right data is completed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add one more channel here because I have a hot spot here at the house. Okay, and that is on I think it's 440.500. And the reason is I want to, oops, remember, I don't really, actually, I'm at the house, I can do it on low. Uh, East Mississippi, so two. What's that? Hit OK. Okay, because that way we can go ahead and test to make sure that all of this is going to work. Um, and you're going to want to send that to the radio again. Don't worry, it doesn't take as long. Just make sure you unclick that digital contact list, otherwise it takes forever every single time. You see, it doesn't take anything at all. <clears throat> Alright, and the radio is restarting. Of course, oops, um, I forgot to stick that into a zone. Uh, I'm just going to stick that... I'll make my own zone for hotspot and send it over there. Um, if you ever, if you can't find channels that you added in there, uh, you just haven't added them into a zone or something like that. So just go back into your zone, stick it over there, hit OK. So you can see it's there from a hotspot, and we're going to write that one more time. <clears throat> and it's done every time it's is done writing it'll tell you to copy the data and then it's going to restart the radio for you and now we're going to check and make sure that this thing works okay so to test it out i actually ended up programming another channel in there or a talk group it's the parrot talk group which what that does is it just reflects what you say back at you k5ata testing on parrot one two three three two one K5ATA testing on parrot one two three three two one. 
and that's it. It works. So, okay. So that was the basics on how to program your, your basic first code plug. There's a lot of other stuff you can set in here. Um, and every radio is going to be a little bit different. You know, hit optional settings, go through here. You can have, uh, work my, well, I don't even know what that does. <clears throat> You can have it say whatever it is you want it to say when it turns on. K5ATA. Uh, you can make it require a password when you start up. You can change different alert tones. Displays. So you can kind of personalize this to be however you want it to be. So take some time, go through here. You know, get your radio set up exactly the way you want. Do some thinking before you do some programming. It's kind of like um, woodworking, you know, measure twice, cut once. I think that's what Norm Abrams or Bob Vila, I think it's Norm, that says that one. Take some time and plan it out so that it makes sense, and it'll make it a lot more enjoyable for you to use. And that's that. That's how you program your first basic code plug and tweak a couple little settings in there when you're uh, getting it up and running. Any questions or anything, comment below. Um, hit like, hit subscribe. I do appreciate it. And y'all take care.